chapter 8, verse 22. And he comes to Bethsaida. Bethsaida and Bethesda are two different words. Bethesda means house of mercy. Bethsaida means the home of the fisherman or the home of the hunter. And this was a, a very, well, one of the most famous in the Decapolis or the ten cities that surrounded the lake. Peter, Andrew, and Philip were born in this town. So Jesus came here many times to the hometown of his three apostles and did a, quite a few miracles in Bethsaida. And when he came, that this is a unique passage of scripture, and I will not go into the controversies that surround it. I just want to bless your heart with a vision of 2023. And they brought, or they bring a blind man unto him. And they brought a blind man unto him and begged Jesus to touch him. Watch these words carefully because they have deep meanings. And he took the blind man. This is Jesus. He took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him, this is the third miracle Jesus used spittle. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw properly. The man looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. This tells me something, that this man was not born blind. Or else, how would he differentiate between men, trees, and walking? He had to have some, this is all I'm assuming, that he was not born blind. Something happened to his vision. And many, many Christians, have their eyes have been opened. But somewhere down the line, something happened and took away their vision. And they lost sight of what they should be seeing. And now men are looking differently. After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes. Now, there are people who will argue that this is proof of progressive healing. I believe that you may need prayer more than once, but this is not progressive healing. Progressive healing is if I pray for you now in two, three days time, you get healed. This is instant, you will see. Within two or three minutes. And after that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up and he was restored. Say restored. restored. And saw every man clearly. Three things about this man's vision. One, he was blind. Two, he was half-sighted. He could see halfway. And thirdly, he saw clearly. I am going to ask you, what's the level of your vision? Is there anything you can see or you just can't see anything? Or if you're seeing, you're seeing halfway. You're not seeing properly. You're not getting the whole picture. Or he touched you a second time. And by the way, that's my theme. I'm giving you my topic in a minute. My theme is the second touch. I firmly believe, humbly as I stand before you, that many people in this country need a second touch from God. Now, we don't charge for amens in this church, so you just feel free to blot out amen. Where is Rene? Hallelujah. Uh, sorry, uh, Brother Jerry and his wife couldn't make it here tonight. Um, 
and Pastor Kimbrough and his wife couldn't make it. I apologize on their absence, but uh, you are here, and that's, that's important. And he saw every man clearly, and he sent him away to his house. Now, this is, this is even more interesting. This passage has four interesting subjects that can be debated. I'm not going into debate, but he sent him away to his house saying, Neither go into the town, because he was outside the town, nor tell it to any man in the town. Why? We will answer that. Let me give you my topic. This pastor was baptizing a fellow. And in that particular denomination, when they baptize you, you're supposed to see a vision. So he took the guy and he dipped him. <sighs> what do you see? Nothing. Okay. He dipped him down again. Held him a little longer. But I got up. <sighs> what do you see? Nothing. So he dipped in the third time and he held him until he started to shake up under the water. And he got up. He said, ah, you've got to see something. I felt you shaking. He said, yes, I see you want to drown me. <laughs> now, we want people to see certain things. And if they don't see it, we tend to force them. I'm not going to force. You can't force a blind man to see. So my subject is, what should you see in 2023? Not what do you see. What should you see? Because what you have been seeing may not be consistent with a biblical vision for your life. You may have a desire, you may, may, you may want to go a certain way, but God may not want you to go that way. And because of that, he will put obstacles after obstacles in your pathway, and you will not obtain your goal because you're not going according to the divine plan for your life. And if you don't see what God sees for you, you will walk in blindness and you will stumble all the time. So let me go into the text, as I always do. I, I, I come straight from the word. We want to compare what you're seeing versus what you should see. And what this man was seeing is not what he should have seen. And we want that corrected tonight. The theme, a second touch. Topic, what should you see in 2023? He came to Bethsaida and they bring him a blind man. I emphasize this point on Christmas morning. The star led the men, the wise men, to Jesus. I really appreciate you bringing people to church, and that is so wonderful. But better than that, they brought the man to Jesus. You know why? Because they couldn't fix the problem. And we can't fix some problems. So we must bring the person to Jesus Christ. Amen. He alone can fix it. Amen. He alone has the power. Amen. He has the know-how. He knows what you've been through. He knows what you're going through. And he knows what you will give, you will be going through. And he can fix it. I encourage you to bring people to Jesus. And after that, you may bring them to church. Connect people to Jesus so that they can be in contact with him. How's your vision? How are you seeing? Now, let me tell you naturally how you see. This is through the eyes. Every one of us, we, when we see an object, we see it upside down. 
That's how we see. Just like a camera. It's upside down. So I am seeing you upside down right now, and you are seeing me upside down through these ends. When the object comes in the back of the eye, the retina, it connects with the nerve to the brain. And the brain interprets what I see right side up. And that's the problem with many people. What they see in church, what they see outside is upside down. And not until the Holy Spirit interprets what we see can we understand what God is showing us. You have to depend on the Holy Spirit to, to give you correct vision. Give me another amen on that. Amen. Good. Why did they bring the man to Jesus? And they begged him to touch him. Touch him. You know, we sing that famous chorus. Reach out and touch the Lord as he passes by. And sometimes that works like the woman with the issue of blood. You reach out and touch. But there are times when you want Jesus to reach out and touch you. May this be that night. They begged him to touch. Father, in Jesus' name, I am begging you to touch me, to touch these wonderful people and make us better. Can you say amen? amen. Now, when they begged Jesus, watch this, and I, I, I really like this. Jesus himself took the blind man by his hand. And led him out of the town. Out away from. I'll tell you why. He led him out of town. I am so happy. That in this dark benighted world. The hands that formed the universe. The hands that created the galaxies. Is the hand that is willing to hold you and lead you through a dark tomorrow in a dark night. Let him hold your hand. You hold his hand and walk together. Can I hear an amen? Oh, hand in hand. What, a, what an awesome privilege it is to have and to hold the hand of Jesus what comfort and assurance to know that he who made all things is holding your hand. I'm asking you the question now. Who's holding your hand? Who is holding your hand spiritually? And I know I see some of you holding hands. It's fine. If you depend on your pastor to hold your hand, I have disappointment for you. Because he can't see you 24-7. Your best friend. Your bosom buddy. As much as they love you. Can't do it when you're alone. When you're sick. When you're worried. When you're in fear. It's only one hand. It's only one hand we recommend. It's the hand of Jesus. Brother, sister, hold on to that hand. Don't let go of that hand because that hand will not let you go. When Peter was sinking as he walked in the water, he said, Lord, help me. And Jesus stretched forth his hand and held him by his hand and lifted him up and made him to walk on water. It's a never failing hand. Oh, hallelujah. Hold on. Hold on to that hand. Hold on to that hand. So he held him and he led him out of the town. There is no better guide to lead you. Away from the crowd. Away from the unbelieving village. Now this is why he led him out of the, uh, out of the town. Jesus was kind of fed up with these people. Because he pronounced a curse on them. He said, woe unto you, Chorazin. Woe unto you, Bethsaida. 
if the miracles that were done in you were done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented in sackcloth and ashes long time ago. Jesus had done so many miracles in Bethsaida that he was not going to do another miracle in that town again because they rejected his power and they were full of unbelief. So he took the man out of the town, lead him outside the town. Sometimes God has to move you away from your unbelieving friends. Sometimes God has to move you away from your unbelieving family. That you might find the power of God for full restoration. Give him glory. Hallelujah. No better guide to lead you when you can't see tomorrow. He will lead you away from what's not convenient and good for you. And when he had spit in his eyes, I will not go into that. It's a very controversial subject. But I knew Jesus, this is the third one time he spat on the ground, mixed some mud, and made a poultice because the man had no eyeballs. And he made a little spittle and he put it in the man's eyes and told him, go in the pool of Siloam and wash. And two eyeballs were created because the saliva. Now, you see, this is where the controversy comes or controversy. These Americans <laughs> spoil my British <laughs> I don't know if to say either or either, neither or neither, schedule or schedule. So, spitting three times. But this one, they say, comment here, and I've done a lot of reading on it. I couldn't believe there was so much material on spitting in the Bible. And, uh, well, let's leave that there. He spat in his eyes and put his hands upon him. You know, Back home, when we have a, a kid behaving bad, we say, oh, Father, put your hand on this child. I'm sure you, you heard that. Father, put your hand on this, this boy. And you know, Pastor, I have to pray that prayer so many times. Father, I can't handle it. Put your hand on this child. And he does. He listens. He hears. Because... We are limited. There's not much we can do. We are channels. You know a pipeline? What can a pipeline do but let water flow through it? That's as much as a pipeline could do. And we as pipelines, you as a pipeline, sometimes there's not much you can do, but you can turn the faucet on and let Jesus flow through you. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Let him. It's all about him. It's all about him in us, through us, with us, for us, and ahead of us. He's guiding. He's guiding this blind man. Now he's putting his hands upon him. And uh, something is going to happen. And when he put his hands upon him, Jesus asked him, How are you seeing now? Get ready to put that clip up for me um, when, when I give the answer. He said, how, how are you seeing? What, what are you seeing? And, and this is actually what happened in those days. Throw the clip up. He looked up. And he said, I saw men as trees walking. That is what he, he probably saw. Hit the next one. People carrying huge bundles on their heads. Bushes. They look like trees walking. Something was wrong. 
with his vision. He was not seeing the way he should. And there is no more troublesome people than those who cannot see the whole picture. When vision is distorted, when you could see halfway, you will have a halfway understanding of what's going on. And not until that is corrected will you see right. And when you see right, you will talk right. You heard what I just said? See, some people like this man can talk, but they can't see. And when they see a little bit, they talk stupidness. You see men like trees. But not until the second touch. And I am so pleased to know that God can give us a second chance. I am so pleased that God can touch us a second time. This is the only place where Jesus had to touch a man twice. Something must have been really wrong. And we can't go into that contro controversy. So Jesus put his hands again upon his eyes. No spitting this time. Do you know that saliva is a powerful thing? Ancient healers use saliva to heal many skin issues. I don't know about you, but sometimes I do this. Saliva is so powerful. The acid in your stomach. Give me, give me back the time, please. The acid in your stomach is so powerful that if you were to put a penny and soak it overnight, the penny would melt. That's how powerful the acid is in your stomach. Every three days, your stomach has to produce another set of lining because the acid will eat out the outer lining of your stomach. What the salivary glands do, they produce about two liters. They see them two liter bottle of Coke, that size. Your salivary glands will produce two liters of saliva every day to counteract the acid in your stomach. And that's why you don't get so much heartburn if, you, if you're producing enough saliva. So there was this old custom that saliva has healing and wanted to discredit Jesus' miracle because they say he spat. And the saliva had something to do with it. No. That's why it failed. Because the unbeliever thought that the saliva was going to get the credit. And so it didn't happen. Jesus did it without the saliva the second time. He put his hands, I would believe, his thumbs or his index finger on his eyes. And, and let me see if he prayed. After he put his hands again upon his eyes, he made him look up. I'm sure he had a silent prayer or maybe just his touch. Many times Jesus didn't pray for a miracle, just his touch. And he was restored. And he saw every man clearly. You see, here's, here's my application. I'm almost done here. We need to see man as God sees man. How God sees mankind in the world? A sinner, lost, undone, cannot save himself. And that's how we need to see men so that we can witness to them and we can spread the light and give them the gospel. Because if we see men as not needing Christ, we will not share Christ with them. And so our vision of the world has to be corrected that we may see men not as trees, but as men having perishable souls, souls that will be lost in eternal hell if they don't repent. And how can they hear without a preacher? And how can a preacher go without being sent? We've got to send the light. We've got to give the message. Can I hear an amen? What should you see? 
in 2023. You should see that the year is going to be better than last year. You should see that your family will become stronger in the Lord this coming year. You should see and vision that you are going to do better for the Lord in this coming year. You are going to, you should see that the past failures must not repeat themselves in this coming year. You should see that the mistakes you made and the slow steps you made should not happen in 2023. You should march on forward. You should march on positively. You should march on with the gospel in your hand. You should lift the banner high up and say, Lord, I am going with your word. If the rapture comes and the trumpet blows, I will be ready. Can I hear an amen? amen? You need to see men clearly or else you'll never preach. Or you'll never witness because you see them as not needing a savior. May God correct that vision. There was this pastor. Conclusion. I want you to get this. He just was installed as a pastor of a new church. Gong-ho to win souls. He put up a sign on his desk. Let's win the world for Christ. Well, that didn't happen. The next year, he put up another sign on his desk. Let's win our community for Jesus. That didn't happen. The next year, he changed the sign. Let's win our families to Jesus. That didn't happen. He put up a, finally, he put up a sign. Please stay saved. I'm asking you, if you can't do it, stay safe. Stay committed. See yourself on fire for God. What should you see in 2023? The main thing is evangelism. The main thing is winning the lost. The main thing is not to see men without souls as trees walking, but people who need salvation. Let's do that in 2023, and our church shall be strong. If you win one person, if you just win one person for the whole year, our church will double next year. Would you stand? Make you want to come with me and do the countdown? Good? Hallelujah. Could you begin to praise the Lord? Because we want to praise the Lord as we leave. And as we usher into the next year, I mean verbally, give God praise and, and make a commitment. I know you have resolutions. I know there are things you want to tell God. And you have one minute to tell him what you want to do, oh Lord, in the coming year. Go ahead. Go ahead. Tell him something that you want to do, Lord. Lord, I want to win souls in this coming year. Lord, I want to be a blessing. Make me an instrument of your peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, I commit my life to you. Oh God, give some people a second touch. Touch them again. Touch them again. Touch them again. In Jesus' name. Touch them again. Oh God, touch, touch, touch. As we come into the new year.